Hi, this is uh, Henry Salama talking on immediate loading for Dental XP. And over the next uh, series of uh, videos and lectures, I'm going to outline the certain protocols that our team uh, here in Atlanta and back at the University of Pennsylvania developed to handle uh, patient management uh, for full fixed restorations as well as single units, especially in the anterior region, relative to the immediate loading protocols that many of us utilize. Most of you, uh, similar to our referring practitioners, uh, have either utilized immediate loading into the practice or certainly have uh, known about it, know about a little bit about the biology and the principles that are involved in it. But how do we actually create logistically the protocols to clinically implement immediate loading? Uh, every situation is different, especially when you compare uh, full arch uh, edentulous patients versus a single unit that's missing in the anterior region. Uh, so in the next videos, we'll go through specific clinical and technical applications of this protocol, whether you uh, are utilizing it uh, on your own, doing both the surgical and the restorative, uh, versus uh, clinicians who are working in tandem uh, with referring dentists, so the surgeon places the implant, then the restorative dentist has to restore it. Uh, how do we communicate? How do we develop protocols uh, to make this an efficient and successful process? Uh, our first video uh, today is going to relate to a patient uh, that uh, has hopeless teeth in the mandible. They're going to be extracted. Uh, and we're going to set up a protocol that actually we developed uh, back in the early 90s uh, for a research study uh, done on immediate loading in the mandibular arch. This protocol is specifically tailored for the hybrid restoration uh, where we need to prepare all the components to uh, provide the patient immediately after implant placement with an immediately loaded restoration. It begins with having two stents. One is a surgical stent made usually of clear acrylic that will guide the surgeon into placing the implants in the proper orientation and proper position for restoration. The second stent is made out of a tooth colored acrylic chosen depending on the shade uh, preference of the patient and is there provided uh, for us to be able to restore the case in an efficient manner at the time of implant placement. And you'll see how we do that, uh, how we put that together uh, to both place an immediately loaded provisional restoration as well as taking an immediate final impression at the time of implant placement. And let's go to the video at, that, at this time. So we begin with the discussion of the uh, full uh, arch restoration starting with the mandible and how we can uh, prepare and implement an efficient protocol. One of the first things that we do for these edentulous patients is we duplicate any existing dentures with a Lang flask uh, duplicator uh, to create surgical stents as well as temporary stents. If the patients don't have an existing denture that's acceptable, we would need to go through record bases, occlusal rims to create uh, a wax up that fits. Then we create the surgical stent from that denture. We then stabilize it in the mouth uh, through a soft reliner posteriorly as well as utilize the surgical stent in a bite registration on the retruded arc of closure. Uh, you get three points in the anterior as you see as well as posteriorly at the proper therapeutic vertical dimension. Once that happens we use that surgical stent uh, to place our implants then we place transfer copings and loot the transfer copings to the surgical stent utilizing a pattern resin. Uh, this then relates the implants to the uh, surgical stent to the upper arch utilizing a bite. We then use elastomeric material to capture the soft tissue relationship after suturing. Now this can be uh, actually mounted and you have the relationship of the lower implants to the upper arch and a temporary restoration can be fabricated in even a final restoration. Clinically this is shown as you see uh, in this video. We test out the surgical stent. We can now uh, go in 
and reflect uh, the flap and expose the surgical area. As you see here, identify the position of the mental foramen on either side. And we're going to place our implants uh, between the mental uh, foramen anteriorly and, uh, if possible, uh, even get some implants posteriorly. We want to see the distance from the mental foramen to the uh, occlusal uh, section of the ridge or the crestal region. We extract the anterior hopeless teeth and flatten out the ridge uh, to create a uh, acceptable bed recipient site. Place the surgical stand back on, make sure that we are in the proper position. Test out also our uh, temporary stent, which is done with tooth colored acrylic so that we can actually fabricate an immediate provisional restoration to be loaded at the time of implant placement. Temporary cylinders are coated with acrylic and placed uh, over the implants and secured. We then do put in the temporary stent and then all we have to do is actually lube the temporary stent to the uh, temporary cylinders uh, to get the proper relationship. We'll put in tack sutures and so that we're working in a clean area, you don't get acrylic that goes below the flaps. Put back the temporary stent, validate position and that there's no interference just as we had on the articulator. And now we can lube the temporary cylinders to the stent while the patient's biting down and holding. And you can see we do this by looting it on the buckle and the lingual, and therefore stabilizing and relating it in a passive situation. In the same way, we use the surgical stent to loot the transfer implant copings to the surgical stent and take a bite registration on the retruded arc of closure again at the verified vertical dimension of occlusion. In the same technique, we lube them on the buckle and the lingual, and then we take a elastomeric impression to record the soft tissue position for the laboratory technician. So now when this patient bites down, you have the bite registration on the occlusal uh, vertical dimension that's therapeutic for this patient, on the retruded arc of closure, we have a relationship of the soft tissue, and we can fabricate not only our immediate provisional restoration, but also we have a final impression to give to the laboratory. We want to create at this time a balanced occlusion uh, so that you have at least one balanced contact when the patient goes in excursions, and you can see the implants are properly distributed for good function and good loading. This is tested out. Here you see the patient come back at six weeks. The tissue has healed well. The occlusal relationship is stable. And we actually, at the second visit, we put on our final abutments. These are aesthetic cones uh, for 3i, and also the final restoration that was uh, fabricated on the articulator from the initial impression done at the time of surgery. So this protocol allows us to take a patient extract hopeless teeth, place in implants, make a provisional restoration, and take a final impression. And the patient is able to have a final restoration, a hybrid type screw-in prosthesis at uh, six to eight weeks in most instances, as you see here. Uh, this is one of the techniques that we utilize uh, to actually treat the fully edentulous patient in um, later videos and instructional lectures on immediate loading, I'll go into the single tooth restoration, especially in the aesthetic zone, as well as full arch restoration in the maxilla as well, and how the two are very different from this particular protocol for the edentulous mandible.